Big Lou, and this is Big Lou Barbecue, and other things I want to do. And today, we're going to do meatloaf for you. Not just one, but two. Yeah, I got two meatloafs, okay? We're going to cook them outside in my wood-fired New K oven, all right? It's a wonderful machine, or cooker device, and got some wood in, burning in there, got it up to temperature, and we're going to make some meatloaves. We're going to use the flavors I'm familiar with here in Louisiana, uh, like the Cajun Trinity. Had to make one substitution due, due to the current situation and climate, but... It's still really, really good. I'm actually kind of impressed with it. All right. And we're going to uh, top it with my favorite sauce. So stick around. Two meatloaves, one kind of low carb, one traditional way with breadcrumbs. Okay. Here are the ingredients. I've got two ribs of celery, one medium sized onion, and what should be a bell pepper. But to be honest, bell peppers were not available at the grocery store. Uh, I'm doing this in March of 2020. And if you're watching this in the distant future, do a little research, you'll find out bell peppers were hard to find. Um, so I am substituted a poblano pepper. A poblano pepper is a very mild pepper, good substitute for a bell pepper. I've got that all cut up. If that was bell pepper, this would be the Cajun Trinity. I've also got about three cloves of garlic uh, cut up. Now, in the uh, regular meatloaf, we're going to use breadcrumbs. I've got these seasoned. You don't have to use seasoned ones, but they're seasoned with um, pecorino romano cheese and some other herbs. And with the low carb one, we're going to use pork rinds. We're gonna crumble those pork rinds up, just crush them up. And I've got some Cajun Creole seasoning. This is stuff that I made. Um, I've got a video on how to make it. You can use your favorite brand of Cajun Creole seasoning. Uh, and for the top, I'm not a ketchup guy on meatloaf. I like Heinz 57 on meatloaf. I may add a dash or two of hot sauce to it, but probably just gonna go with straight Heinz 57 on it. I can add the meat sauce, the hot sauce to my piece of meatloaf uh, later on. And we've got some Worcestershire sauce. So not shown, of course, is the ground meat and a few strips of bacon. Let's get the frying up the bacon. All right, getting this bacon cooked to a crisp. I'm gonna get it out of here so we can crumble it up. I'm using thin bacon because thin bacon crumbles better than uh, thick bacon, but you can use either one you want. Anyway, that's about all the bacon we're gonna need. What I'm doing now is sizzling up the onions the celery and what should be the bell pepper, but, but in this case, it's a poblano. And um, with the bell pepper, we'd call that the Cajun Trinity. All right, I'm adding a few pinches of salt and I'm browning this right in the bacon grease. I wanna get these onions to where they're just about to turn brown and we're gonna add in the garlic and we're gonna continue until the garlic is softened and the onions should be brown. Then we're gonna take this out and I'm gonna put it in a strainer and strain it out any of the extra grease let it cool off a bit before we add it to the meat and then we're ready to mix up our meatloaf. Right, the onions are browning, so we're gonna put in the garlic and stir this around till the garlic pieces are soft. The garlic's gotten soft. The onions have gotten as brown as I want them to be. Remember, this stuff will continue to cook a bit in the meatloaf. What I'm gonna do is just spoon it into this strainer. I've already turned the uh, stove off and I'm just gonna continue to put it in the strainer and just let any excess bacon grease uh, come out of it before we mix it into the meat. Okay. I like to flatten the meat out, okay? And then that way I can mix it up on this parchment paper here. It's a little easier than doing a bowl. So first we're gonna add in the bacon. Get it everywhere so it's mixed thoroughly. Now, I've got some Cajun Creole seasoning here. I make this, there's an iCard somewhere in this video, if it's earlier or if it's here, and there's a link down below on how to make it. I know what's in it, no MSG. So just gonna season it up with what I like to use. If you wanna know how to make it, you can watch the video. If not, use Tony's or Slap Your Mama or your favorite brand of Cajun Creole seasoning. Doesn't matter to me. All right. Now, I've got these, um, they've been draining and we're just gonna kinda, wanna get them all mixed in there. They have cooled so that they're not cooking the meat. They're not real cool, but they're not cooking the meat. Now, I'm gonna glove up. You know what, I forgot the Worcestershire sauce. Let's get some Worcestershire sauce in here. Then we're gonna mix it up. All right, gotta have some dashes of Worcestershire in a meatloaf. All right, that all about do it. Now we'll glove up, be back, we'll mix this up. All right, 
Got gloves on both hands. Just get in here and mix this up. Now you may be wondering, well, what about salt, pepper, garlic, stuff like that? Well, I've got the fresh garlic in the mixture and there's garlic and salt and pepper all in that Cajun Creole season, also chili powder and um, stuff like that. One thing that might be good in here would be a little bit of cumin, but I'm not adding it today, but probably would be good. Anyway, you can see I'm just gonna mix this mixture up, okay? Just like this. Right, I've got them all mixed up. Now to this one that's nearest you, I'm gonna put in these crumbled pork rinds. All right, probably a cup, maybe a cup and a half. And I'm gonna try to put in about the same amount of breadcrumbs here. And you know what? I forgot to put an egg in the mixture, didn't I? I need an egg in each. All right, I got an egg on the one with the pork rinds and an egg on the one with the breadcrumbs. Now what I'm gonna do is simply mix these up again, just like this. I'm gonna mix both loaves up. I'm gonna keep them separate this time. And uh, I'll show you when we're ready to stuff them into the pan. It's a red tinted one for this one with the pork rinds in it. And this clear one for the one with the breadcrumbs in it. Now, if you've noticed, I mixed the one with the pork rinds first. That way I could just go to the ones with the breadcrumbs because it's okay to put um, pork rinds in the breadcrumb one, but it's not okay to put breadcrumbs in the pork rind one because we're trying to stay low carb. So all we're gonna do, I'm just gonna pile it in this loaf pan right here and pack it down in there. You want it packed tight, just like this. I'm trying to do it with one hand right now, but I've got two, so my, well, that one doesn't have a glove on it, so we're just gonna do it one-handed. Just get it all packed in like this, and I'll smooth it out a little bit before we put it in the oven. But that's about what we got to do. Just like that. It's that easy. We don't put the Heinz 57 on top yet. I'm going to get it cooked first. Now this one will go into the glass one. All right. Well, pile this one into the glass one. And just get it all packed in here. Tight and even there. So there's no bubbles or air pockets or anything like that in it. Nobody wants to bite into a meatloaf that has a big old air pocket in it. Just like this. All right, these are ready to go in the oven. I'll wipe the edges down with a paper towel and I'll meet you out at the wood fired oven. All right, it's very, very windy out here. You may not be able to hear me, but I got a good fire going under there. Got this oven heated up to about 350 according to the thermometer on the inside. That one's sometimes a little slow, but that one says about 340, it's going up to 350. All right, this one right here, low carb in the pink one. Standard, right there. I'm gonna push them a little further to the back. Hottest part of the wood-fired oven. Well, the way I've got the fire going, I have moved some up to the front. We're not gonna let them go, about 45 minutes, an hour or so. We'll have meatloaf. Got a nice bed of coals there. And it did calm down after I shut the vents a little earlier. But it's still pretty hot, about 400. I need to hold that open while I pull this open. And what we're going to do here is glaze them. Now look at that. You see it's cooking in the juices and the top's brown. Oh yeah. I think it's about time we check it and see how, what the temperature is on it. I pull that oven out and then the door won't slam on I mean that oven rack out, the door won't slam on me. So go in here. One sixty six, one seventy. That's you want at least one sixty. So that's where we are. All right. So we're we're done. So what we need to do is put this Heinz fifty seven sauce on them. Let it glaze over. 
And I'm just going to brush it on like this, okay? Try to tilt it so you can see it on the camera. Just brush it on the top. Some people put ketchup. Some people use barbecue sauce. I like 57 sauce on my meatloaf. You can use whatever you like. But I think 57 sauce goes very well. Pork chops and meatloaf. All right, shove that one back in. Do this one the same way. I'm not gonna leave them in the oven long, just a few minutes for this to glaze over. I'm gonna pull them out. A little bit more. Get on there. Sorry to step in front of you there. That's it, just enough to coat the top. We're throwing a little more, you know what, I like it. I like it, so we're gonna put in a little bit more because I got a little bit more. Heck, we'll put a little bit more on the pork rind low carver one too. All right, now. Shove these back in. Just about five more minutes. Let that uh, glaze over. Hi there. Time to pull these out. Time to pull them out. Pull them out carefully too so I don't spill that uh, au jus. Don't make a gravy with that to go on the mashed potatoes. That's what it looks like right there. Woo! good this one will be good too even though it doesn't have breadcrumbs it's got pork rinds mm -hmm. okay well here they are right off camera I used some anju from uh, or the juice from this one with the pork rinds uh, for the gravy which means I got all this to make more gravy tomorrow for something else if I need to all right now, put that in center camera, zoom in a little bit. It's been my experience that the pork rinds do not hold together as well as one with um, breadcrumbs in it. Couldn't remember the word. All right, I know I'm cutting in front of you here, but we'll just take a little slice. Looks like that right there. Hannah, you want one with breadcrumbs or the pork rinds? I'll try the pork rind one. The pork rind one, okay. So now I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna come over here and do it this way. Yeah, see, pork rinds, they'll give you a low, low carb meatloaf. I guess you could leave them out, but it still is a little more crumbly than one with breadcrumbs in it. All right, here is pork rind. Here's another piece of it, babe. Hannah's taste test number one. They're not on camera right now. Eli, he, you want with the one with the breadcrumbs, the traditional one? Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. There's more where that came from now. Just taste it and let us know what you think. This is much better than the school cafeteria, that's for certain. Much better than the school cafeteria. All right, I'm back with a wider shot. Got some mashed potatoes and gravy, and I spilled some of the gravy over on the plate so that my piece of meatloaf can go right in the gravy like that. You see? And I'll try one with the pork rind, too. It doesn't stay together quite as well as the one with breadcrumbs, but it's a good low carb alternative. If you want to try it, you can see it is holding its shape somewhat. Okay, my kids are eating just off camera. Hannah, what did you say about the uh, pork rind one? I like it, it's neat. She says she likes it, it's neat. <laughs> okay, I've done it before, it's falling apart, but I don't think the kids knew where pork rind's at. That's the pork rind one, and it's very good. Very, very good. Mm-hmm. Now, I want ground meat cooked pretty done. Um, I only eat, like beef and stuff rare. I don't fool around. I know it's beef, but it's ground beef, so I like it well done. This is the breadcrumb one. Definite difference. The pork rind one, maybe it was cooked more. Little, little chewier texture. This one, a little more melty, mushier texture. Also, those breadcrumbs were seasoned with the um, Parmesan cheese and all, and I can taste that in this one. Whereas the one with the pork rinds might be 
a little bit saltier, but not much. All right, the gravy's good, everything's good. Meatloaf, yeah, I know. I don't want to tip this too much. I don't want to fall on my plate, but guys. Uh, I want to thank um, Rick's Barbecue and Specialties and everybody else that uh, joined the collaboration. And I want to thank Pickles for coming up with the hashtag. Remember, the hashtag is Ma, where's the meatloaf? Okay, my wife said since I used the pork rinds that I needed to probably add two eggs to work as a binder to keep it together a little bit. It's keeping together okay, but it's a little more crumbly than the one with breadcrumbs. And that's the just one more thing, like Columbo used to say.